Hello, my name is Bob Woodley. In this video, I'm going to describe an app I built in WebGL using 3GS to explore complex transforms and Mobius transformations. The work here was inspired by a video Henry Segerman did on similar topics in the context of uh, editing spherical videos. Um, all the pictures, when you go to the, when you start the app up, it looks like this. This, it starts with a default texture, which is just the UV texture. There's a variety of pictures you can select here um, by clicking on them, clicking on the little boxes at top. So these are pictures I've taken with my Ricoh Theta symbol, spherical photos, 360, they're not really 360 degrees, it's 4 pi, but they colloquially they are called 360 degree photos. So you may have seen these spherical photos around the web. They're becoming more and more popular, especially with the Rego Theta being a nice cheap device that is accessed, accessible to the general public. So I have a variety of photos I've taken with it. So if we go back to the texture, um, like I say, when you start here, um, this is when you start the app, you're at this screen here with the generic texture. Um, I'm going to sort of give an overview of how the math and the graphics interact, uh, then walk through some of the fun effects we can do with it. There's a little button here called Toggle. So this shows the basic texture as a plane. Click it again, you're back to being inside the sphere. Obviously spherical photos are photos that are projected onto a sphere and you're just rotating the sphere around you. Um, so you can be inside the sphere, outside the sphere or simply looking at the plane texture itself. Those are the three modes that this program operates on. Most of the time you just stay in this mode, which you're inside the sphere looking at the pictures. Um, but we can look at the different modes here. We're outside the sphere and here's the plane vanilla texture. All right, so there's another option called debug. Now it's showing you the unit vector in XYZ space. So 3JS doesn't know anything about complex numbers. WebGL doesn't know anything about complex numbers as is. They're just dealing with Cartesian space XYZ. As you rotate, you're looking. This is a unit sphere and it's showing you here the unit vector, what part in the XYZ space you're looking at on the units, unit sphere. You can doubt the unit sphere because the line is always one. Now, as we indicated, what we're doing here is we're um, taking the Cartesian sphere and we're pretending it's a Riemann sphere. Uh, a Riemann and it's we're, a Riemann sphere maps the complex plane to a sphere, and this shows you the point in complex the complex plane that you're looking at on this Riemann sphere. So at the bottom of the Riemann sphere, it's basically zero. You're looking at the point zero comma zero. At the top of the Riemann sphere, you're going to look at infinity. It's kind of hard to line it up. It gets pretty big numbers up there at the top. Uh, somewhere up there is infinity. And then on the horizontal line, you're looking at the unit complex um, vector. So as I rotate around here, um, we're looking at, we're staying on this line at the bottom of E2, E3, E4, which is the unit complex vector. That's the horizontal line in the Riemann sphere. So the debugging is useful when you're debugging and you want to see, I want to get all the math right. So I, I had to rely on this quite heavily to make sure I was um, doing it all correctly. So what's fun about most, we'll turn off the rotation here, this is just the camera rotating. Um, Mobius transformations can be used to, um, so the camera rotations, they rotate along the pole axis from the north pole to the bottom pole. But what if you want to rotate on a different axis? Let's say we want to rotate on a point there. So uh, I just put a red dot where the camera was looking and now I'm rotated around that red dot. At this point, the camera is not moving. It's actually in the Mobius. I'm doing a Mobius transform on the complex plane. Well, you could say, how do you know? Maybe you are rotating the camera. It's certainly possible on 3JS. Well, we can go look 
back at the texture and we see that we are in fact morphing the texture that's being mapped to the sphere around the two antipodal fixed points. And we can look at the external sphere to get the same idea. That there I just moved the camera, but the rotation remains the same. Right, we'll go back inside here, we'll reset. This is the reset button. Um, so we can, there's no reason the fixed points have to be antipodal. They don't have to be at antipodes. They don't have to be opposite each other. We can put one there and another one there, and then we can hit rotate. And now the whole thing is rotating around the fixed points, which are not antipodal points. So you can see on the texture. I always find it interesting to look at the texture to understand what's going on. It's a different view on it. So here we are back inside the Riemann sphere as we're rotating using Mobius transforms. We could look at more interesting backdrops than our simple UV texture. There's the Chicago City Hall being rotated. And um, so let's pause the rotations. Let's turn off the rotations. We have our two fixed points here. Now we can zoom in and out. So now I'm zooming in on the red point, zooming out on the blue point, or conversely. Zooming in on the blue point, zooming out on the red point. Uh, if I want a nice clean picture, I get rid of the debugging information, hit the space bar, all the icons go away, and now I have just a nice clean picture of the transforms I've done. And in, in some three spherical um, video programs or spherical renderers, when you're looking at a viewer, a photo viewer, spherical viewers, they have things that look like zooms, but they're not really zooms. They may just be moving the camera closer to the edge of the sphere, or they may be increasing or decreasing the camera lens. In fact, I could do this here with increasing and decreasing the viewport using the, these here. Um, these buttons here, wide, smaller viewport, wider viewport. Um, but by using Mobius transforms, we get conformal zoom, with the, uh, which maintains the angles. So all the angles here are the same as they were before we did the zoom. That may be hard to believe, but uh, it is the case. Uh, you can look at, read articles about it, or uh, I will not go any further into it, but this is a conformal zoom. Once again, we hit rotate, or we hit reset. It looks like rotate, it's a little dangerous. It's the reset button. So I have showed how to set fixed points. I have showed how to rotate around the fixed points. I have showed how to zoom in and out of the fixed points. Um, those are your Mobius transforms. You can apply other complex transforms um, to the texture. Like here now, we've, we've applied x squared. So x is a complex number, and we're squaring the function, the transform function we're using is x squared. And now you see instead of two hallway, instead of, well, there was one long hallway before, actually, let's reset it. What we had before is one long hallway and a doorway. One long hallway and a doorway. Now we do x squared, we have a doorway, one long hallway, another doorway, another long hallway. Once again, we go to the texture, see what's happening. It's dupli it's up, applied a branch point, uh, so now we have the same texture repeated twice. We can remove that effect. This was the original texture. Now we do x squared, we can do x cubed, x to the fourth, and so forth. Maybe clear to see with the original texture here, or city hall texture. Um, so obviously this is most quite interesting for videos, so I've recorded some videos. This is the video that was done on North Avenue Beach here in Chicago. It's two volleyball players. I put the camera right underneath the net. There they are playing, two volleyball players. We can set a fixed point on one of them. Turn on the bug so we see the fixed point. That's close enough. Put another fixed point maybe by the net. Do the rotation. So the video is still playing, 60 frames a second. And we're now rotating the whole beach scene around those fixed points. We can, instead of two volleyball players, we could have four volleyball players. 
six life off of us. Oh. Uh, we still might want to rotate to fit more of them in the screen. I think we're going to see more, maybe not. There they are. The whole beach is rotating. Oh, the video stopped. I restarted. Rotating around those fixed points. Yes, my son is standing next to me asking me to show the infinity effect. All right, let's get rid of the rotations. Back to normal. This is a formula that Henry Segerin used in his videos. Let's get rid of all this debugging information. Which basically creates an infinite number of volleyball players streaming off to the edges there. That's a fun little effect. What if we square the scene? Now we have two infinities. There they are, two infinities. And so forth, more infinities. So this, have fun playing with it, exploring the complex plane and the effects you can do to video. Please tweet me or leave a comment somewhere. I'd be happy to get any feedback. Hopefully this is also use, yeah useful for learning about the mathematics involved, as well as just producing some cool screenshots. Thank you very much.